In this video, we're going to be talking about a type of way to uh, define an angle, a measurement of an angle, which is all about radians. So to start off with, we're going to define what a radian is. A radian is a length or arc of a circle that is equal to the radius. So what that means is if you take a, a circle, this beautiful circle, <laughs> and you find what the radius of that circle is, so this length, which we'll call r, then if you take that same length r and travel that distance on the circle, then that distance would be one radian. Okay, so it might seem like, why do we even care about this? Why is this important? Well, it turns out that while degrees are more intuitive when you're talking about uh, defining an angle than uh, describing a radian in terms of measurement, a lot of mathematical formulas rely on radians. They won't work if you use an angle in degrees. So we need to know how to work with radians to apply a lot of our formulas. So from here, we say that in every circle there are two pi radians. So hopefully this brings a little bit of reasoning to why the circumference of a circle, the formula is c equals 2 pi r, since a radian is equal to the radius. Then if you take 2 pi, the number of radians there are in a circle, and multiply it by your radius, then you are multiplying it 2 pi by your radians, meaning you are traveling the full length around the circle. Okay, so we're not going to get too much into that, because that's more of an algebra type of problem, but it's just a quick callback to where that formula comes from. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and talk about how to convert from radians to degrees back and forth, because we will need to know both of them. They both have their purpose. Degrees, as I mentioned previously, are really intuitive to work with, and radians are very useful for formulas. So, we say that since a complete rotation is equal to 360 degrees, and since there are two pi radians in a circle or in a complete rotation, then that means two pi radians must be equal to 360 degrees. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and solve for radians and degrees to find the conversion from one to the other. So if we start with solving for radians, we would divide each side by 2 pi to get the radians unit alone, which would leave us with 1 radian is equal to 360 degrees over 2 pi. Well, we can reduce that. 360 divided by 2 is 180, so it's equal to 180 degrees over pi. Okay, so this helps us with one form of conversion. If we're given some angle in radians and we want to convert it to degrees, all we have to do is multiply that measurement by 180 degrees over pi, and that will give us the value in degrees. Now, working backwards, we have, oh, and I'm going to put a star next to this, as this is very important. And now, working backwards, we'll go back to that 2 pi radians is equal to 100, uh, sorry, 360 degrees. Okay, so from here, now solving for degrees, we will divide each side by 360. And again, we can reduce a factor of 2 from the numerator and denominator. When we do that, we'll be left with 1 pi over 180. 
So that just gives us pi over 180 radians is equal to 1 degree. So that gives us another conversion that we can use here. All right, so both of these are extremely important, and we're going to go ahead and try them out. So we want to convert 50 degrees to radians. Well, to convert 50 degrees to radians, we know that 1 degree from here is equal to pi over 180 radians. So all we're going to do is change our degree symbol that's with this 50 to then be pi over 180 radians. So instead of 50 degrees, we now have 50 times pi over 180 radians. And now we can simplify this. 50, we can change to 50 over 1. We'll reduce this by canceling a factor of 10 from the top and bottom, which gives us 5 in the top and 18 in the bottom. So we end up with 5 pi when we multiply across over 1 times 18 is 18 radians. So 50 degrees is the same thing as 5 pi over 18 radians. Now, we want to convert 9 pi over 2 radians to degrees. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can't find that conversion on your own. Okay, so trying this together, we have 9 pi over 2 radians. Well, we know that 1 radian is equal to 180 degrees over pi. So we're going to change this to 9 pi over 2 times 180 degrees over pi. We want to cancel any like terms in the top and bottom to simplify this. In the top left, we have pi, and in the bottom right, we have pi. Those will cancel out. And in the top and bottom, we have a factor of 2 that we can cancel out, leaving us with 90 degrees in the top right. So what's left altogether? Well, we have 9 times 90 is 810 degrees and there's nothing left in the denominator so 9 pi over 2 is the same thing as 810 degrees all right so now you're probably noticing as I was writing all these problems that writing out radians over and over and over again is very tedious and annoying so it turns out, in general, in mathematics, unless it's otherwise shown, angle measurements are always in radians. So that means whenever you see the angle of 50, for example, that does not mean 50 degrees. It means 50 radians, which would be closer to 2,900 degrees. So, never assume that you're dealing with degrees. Always assume that it's radians unless you see the degree symbol. Okay, so continuing on from here, we have a list of all the major angles that we deal with in this course. Now, there are some other ones that can come up from time to time that end up being a little bit important, like 15 degrees, 75 degrees will occur here and there when we talk about double angles and half angles and things like that. But for the most part, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees are the five most important angles in this course. 
we can use reference angles from all of these other remaining angles to bring them back to these five original ones. So in terms of these angle measurements that you see here, you should do your best to commit all of these to memory if you can. But if you can't, just make sure that you memorize these first five in their degree form and in their radian form. So zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two are just as important. We need to memorize all of these as they will come up all the time in trigonometry. Okay, so from here, we talked about reference angles. When we work with reference angles and degrees, we have some formulas that we go through. But now with radians, we have some very similar formula, formulas. So for instance, given theta is between pi over 2 and 2 pi, so meaning it's not in our quadrant 1, then the reference angle theta prime is found by using these formulas. Meaning if we're in quadrant 1, then we have our reference angle. But if we're in quadrant 2, then we take our angle that we have and subtract it from pi to find the reference angle. If we're in quadrant 3, then we take the angle we're given and subtract pi from that. And finally, if we're in quadrant 4, we take 2 pi and subtract our angle from that. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. We want to find the reference angle for 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6, we'll go ahead and put this one in red. 5 pi over 6, if we begin, if we begin measuring this out, remember this is 0. This is pi over 2. Pi 3 pi over 2, and then back to 2 pi. So just like measuring with degrees, how we stick to the quadrantal angles for a good focus point of uh, a good reference point, that is, we should do the same thing for radians. So if we want to find out where 5 pi over 6 is on this chart, we'll begin drawing our angle. Is it greater than or less than pi over 2? Well, pi over 2 is the same thing as 3 pi over 6. We have 5 pi over 6, so it is going to be greater than that. Is it greater than or less than pi? Well, pi is the same thing as 6 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 is less than that. So our angle is in quadrant 2. So what's our formula? We have pi minus our angle. So pi minus 5 pi over 6. We simplify by getting a common denominator. We'll put this pi over 1. We have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 6 to get a least common denominator of 6 that will allow us to subtract the fractions. Always remember, you have to have the same denominator to add or subtract. Multiplying and dividing, the denominators can be different. So we get 6 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6. 6 pi minus 5 pi leaves us with 1 pi, which we just write as pi. If you're not used to that, then think of it like x's. 6x minus 5x would just be x. Remember, you don't write the 1x there. And that's over our common denominator of 6. So the reference angle to 5 pi over 6 is just pi over 6. Remember, this is just a reference angle. It is not the same thing. 5 pi over 6 does not equal pi over 6. It's just that pi over 6 is a way that we can 
quickly reference this angle. It, it ends up having similar values when we plug it into certain functions later on. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and do the next one in blue. I want you to take a moment, find the reference angle for 7 pi over 4. Pause the video, try this out. Okay, so trying this together, 7 pi over 4. If we go up to the first quadrantal angle, pi over 2 is the same thing as 2 pi over 4, so we need to go past that. Pi is the same thing as 4 pi over 4, we're still not there. 3 pi over 2 is the same thing as 6 pi over 4, so we need to go a little further. 2 pi is the same thing as 8 pi over 4, so we need to go halfway. So we are in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4 says we take 2 pi and subtract our angle from it. So we have 2 pi minus 7 pi over 4. We need a common denominator again. We'll put the 2 pi over 1 and multiply the numerator and denominator by 4 which gives us 4 times 2 pi is 8 pi over 4 minus 7 pi over 4. 8 pi minus 7 pi is 1 pi, which is just pi over 4, the common denominator. So the reference angle for 7 pi over 4 is pi over 4. On to the last part of this section, we have the given, uh, sorry, the definition, given the radius of a circle and angle theta in radians, so note this is already a case where we have to use radians, degrees will not work, then the arc length on that circle is contained by the angle sorry, let me say that again, then the arc length on that circle contained by that angle is given by the formula S equals R theta. <coughs> sorry. So, let's go ahead and look at what this is saying, because that's a little bit long of a definition, and... My throat was kind of drying out as I said it, so I imagine I made that a little bit more difficult. Let me, let me explain this further with this picture. We're saying if you have some angle, theta, which we've drawn here, then if you measure out the radius from the beginning or the initial side of theta all the way to the terminal side, then the distance on your circle that you traveled from that angle is called s, which is the arc length on that circle, defined by that angle. And s is equal to r times theta, your angle. So, given a circle with a diameter of 24 meters and an angle of 90 degrees, we want to find the arc length. So we have our formula, S equals R theta. Can we just start plugging angles into this? Well, no, because given the angle that we have, 90 degrees, it is not in radians. We have to convert it first. So remember, 90 degrees, using the list of angles we had earlier, is equal to pi over 2. This is one of the ones that you want to try to memorize. If you can't commit that to memory or if you have trouble memorizing things, then remember you could always use our formula where you would multiply this by pi over 180 to convert it to radians. But we can just quickly say 90 degrees is equal to pi over 2. And the diameter is 24 meters which means that the radius is half of that. So the radius is 12 meters. 
So to find the arc length, we have S equals R theta. So S equals 12 meters times theta is pi over 2. 12 times pi over 2. Well, half of 12 is just 6. So we get S equals 6 pi meters. We cannot convert away from pi. If you've taken any type of geometry or trigonometry class in the past, you would know that pi is equal to 3.14, but that's not technically true. It's approximately equal to 3.14. It actually goes on forever. It's not a rational number. We can't define it with a fraction. So if you were to convert this to 3.14 and multiply that by 6 to find the length, you would be approximating the length. We do not want to approximate unless we're told to. You should always assume that you are finding the exact value. So the arc length in this case is just 6 pi meters, and we leave it just like that.